Hello everyone, uh, we will uh, continue with our lecture series uh, on this optimal control guidance and estimation course. Uh, last lecture we have started this uh, recent uh, ideas of integrated uh, guidance and control thing like that and here we will uh, we'll also talk about estimation this particular uh, lecture and we will continue further this development with uh, first integrated estimation and guidance and then followed by integrated estimation guidance and control as well. So, uh, let us see and we will not be able to cover everything, but we will cover uh, uh, I mean what uh, we have come up with uh, with the last couple of years and uh, details on that actually really. All right, so the motivation turns out to be something like this, uh, obviously the interest is to fuse the estimation guidance and control loops at various levels and typically the benefits arise because integrated designs are capable of retaining and exploiting the synergy between various subsystems. And then integrated approaches can be categorized into various categories, uh, uh, first thing some can be something like integrated guidance and control and then integrated estimation and guidance and integrated estimation guidance and control as well. Okay. Now, what it turns out that uh, this particular uh, when uh, topic when we talk about integrated estimation and all that, uh, it has a uh, lot more impact when we talk about estimation of exogenous input for control design. In other words, something like missile guidance, where the target information is estimated, not really recovered from the from the missile's own uh, instrument system. Actually, now, th those are typically good. What what is not good is exogenous input that we collect from our own sensors, and how can you actually fuse that into the guidance control design uh, loops so that the efficiency or performance can be much better. Actually, so that's what we are interested in. So the philosophy, as we uh, saw that in the in the last class. What we did uh, is typically this one guidance and control, okay. but uh, suppose somebody wants to do this way estimator and guidance then that leads to this uh, this concept of integrated estimation and guidance and also somebody can think about putting something in together then it, uh, it is integrated estimation guidance and control and uh, some people would uh, like to call it as uh, integrated guidance and control and estimation IGC and D. Okay. So, anyway, so the concept is either you talk about IEG here or you talk about IEGC here. So, both of that we will talk in uh, in this lecture as uh, some sort of a little overview of uh, what is uh, our own way of doing things actually. And this is a different representation again, where this, this picture is slightly confusing, uh, but what you are typically proposing here is something a little more elaborately something like this. And remember the, the control when you talk about here this particular block is actually consist of uh, two loops uh, outer loop and inner loop. Outer loop is something that you take uh, lateral acceleration commands from guidance loop and try to generate the corresponding body rates uh, especially the pitch and yaw rates and then uh, roll rate stabilization and things like that. Uh, so, pitch, pitch, pitch row, I mean roll pitch and yaw once it is available you go through inner loop to generate the control surface deflection and then pass it through the actual dynamics and then simulate back and all that actually. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean this particular output what you talk about they can be fed into uh, they, they can be decomposed into this uh, this four control surface deflections uh, delta 1 to delta 4 and then uh, you fed it uh, fed it to the missile actually with, uh, as an as an etcetera input sort of thing. So, that that part is uh, what it is and what you are talking here is uh, either this part either estimator and guidance together or this part okay, where the outer loop of the of the control is also integrated. That means, uh, we directly generate this uh, this uh, body rates from after doing the estimation actually. So, that kind of uh, things can uh, can come in basically that way. All right, the topics that you are covering here is uh, is taken from uh, two of our own papers. Uh, first thing is uh, what we presented in 2010 AIAA GNC conference and subsequently in 2011 what we presented we will talk, uh, talk next actually. So, these two, two, two papers are typically the material that is I mean typically contain the material that I am going to talk today actually. So, those of you are interested you can see this paper for more details actually. All right, the first thing is, uh, is uh, this first paper uh, which talks about a zero effort meet miss based effective integrated estimation and guidance of interceptors in terminal phase. So, these are uh, details of the of the work actually. So, again the reference in detail is something here. So, again we are talking uh, something like integrated estimation and guidance. We are not typically bothered about control part as it is. 
However, the simulation thing that you are going to show also talks about control in the loop and, uh, and uh, it is not necessary, I mean it, the results that you see here are not uh, from point mass uh, simulation. Whatever is, I mean even if it is uh, something like this, okay, okay, this part is also included as part of the simulation all that what you see here actually. Okay, then what you see, what you present the results is, uh, is the full six of uh, simulation results essentially. All right, so, let us get started, uh, how do we do it and things like that. And the concept is uh, something like this, first thing the lateral acceleration commands uh, have been obtained as an algebraic function of the estimated states. That means, there is uh, typically no delay. Okay. So, you estimate certain states and then directly compute the, uh, the lateral acceleration required for the missile as uh, some sort of a direct algebraic function actually. Okay. How can you do that? Because this is a kind of motivated from this uh, this guidance. See, P n guidance can be uh, can be represented. Okay, what we know is something like this. P n guidance is typically implemented as something like uh, a lateral acceleration is something like uh, navigation constant, and then v either v m or v c closing velocity times lambda dot. Okay, that is uh, line of sight rate. But this is also equivalent to something like this, okay, uh, which is some uh, which is called as uh, uh, see this this uh, ZDM is called as something like zero effort miss, and then the time to go square. So it can be actually shown that this uh, same expression can be written something like this. So now the idea is somehow if we can estimate this uh, this ZDM as well as T go, then we got it actually we got the lateral, lateral estimation. So, how can you do that? That is the whole idea there and this requires lot of algebra and then, and then implementation in the framework of EKF and things like that. So, let us see how, how do you do that actually. Okay. So, essentially in the state estimation this, uh, this ZDM and T goes are, are actually states and then uh, using state estimation concepts that you have studied in, in Kalman filtering and all that we estimate and then directly compute uh, in some sort of formula like this. Okay. I will talk in, we will talk those details uh, as we go along actually. So, just a little bit summary of uh, our EKF and uh, all the results that you see are in the in the framework of EKF, but someone wants to implement UKF, uh, you can also do that. But the uh, concept remains same, we have this steady equation where this uh, I mean nonlinear equation steady equation, I mean this uh, corrupted by noise. And then output equation uh, corrupted by noise as well. Both of these are nonlinear equations. And then typically you proceed like this: you start with some initialization of states as well as covariance matrix, covariance matrix, and then compute the gain, and then follow the. I mean, this update the states actually. Okay, update the states as well as uh, uh, as covariance matrix. Okay, then you propagate the states and covariance matrix. So, this update happens in, in discrete time and, uh, and propagation happens in continuous time. Uh, all these details we have uh, seen before. So, the I mean all these techniques are available. So, what matters in a particular problem is how do you formulate the problem okay, right here. Once this is available, rest of the things we can have this tuning process and then, uh, and then our prior experience can come in and things like that. But given a problem, how do you actually formulate this to, to begin with? and then go ahead and solve it actually. So, that is what you are interested. So, essentially we will we will not talk too much on implementation details of Kalman filtering, we have already done that. So, what we really want to see is how do we come up with these two these two equations, state equation and output equation in this particular given problem. Rest of the things we are typical, I mean I can if you allow me I can say that is mechanical actually. Right. Uh, all right, so this is how it is. So, let us uh, try to see that. So, what you are interested is okay, obviously in the in the implementation if you see in Kalman filtering this W and V are never used actually. Okay. So, the covariance of W W transpose expected value of W W transpose things like that uh, are, are like Q R and things like that are typically part of the design, but W and V themselves are not part of the design. So, we need not come up with this part of it as part of the formulation, we implicitly assume that these are there basically that way. So, what we mean is how do you write the state equation and output equation and then we can we can mathematically write something like that and start guessing this initial condition as well as covariance matrix and, and carry out for further algebra basically. All right, so what you are interested in is something like this, okay, x dot is f, x, f of x plus g of x times u, it, uh, this dynamics happens to be 
kind of control f i n. So, you can write it this way, it really does not matter what way you write, but if you if you write it already like this, then uh, control computation becomes slightly easier and all that So, we are not too much concerned about that because this particular problem is, uh, is essentially an estimation problem. And this is your sensor output, ok. So, these two we have to write, but also remember this z and which uh, which typically represents uh, the desired output, they are nothing but the measure lateral acceleration. And these lateral oscillations are all also computed as an algebraic function of the estimated state actually. Okay, so, that is the whole beauty here. All right, so, state variables uh, we are taking as uh, these, these components of uh, this z d m along the x y z component uh, and then the relative velocity along x y z as well as the target uh, accelerations along x y z and time to go t go. So, we have 3 coming from here, 3 coming from here, 3 coming from here and 1. So, essentially it is a 10 state estimation problem actually and these are uh, not uh, that uh, easy numerically essentially, but you non nonetheless you have to do that uh, because we uh, we want to derive additional benefits and things like that actually. So, we cannot escape from there. And what are the measurement thing available to us? So, typically these are uh, range and uh, we are assuming there is a seeker because it is a terminal phase uh, problem. Uh, distance between initial separation between missile and target is not very much. So, we assume that uh, these are seeker based estimation and all that. Uh, seekers are also available which can give us range, range rate as well as this uh, this gimbal angles and their rates actually. Okay. So, this uh, these gimbal angles are something like uh, the seeker frame uh, uh, compare I mean uh, whatever angle it makes with respect to the body frame actually. We will we'll give you some diagrams as we go along also. And the output variables are nothing but lateral oscillations in x, y, z components actually. But ultimately remember we want output I mean this this lateral oscillations in in body frame because that is what the aerodynamics will come into picture and then try to uh, realize it. Uh, whereas, all these formulation that we talk about z m z m uh, components and then velocity components everything else is typically in the inertial frame ok. So, inertial frame the, the estimation goes on and then using this uh, transformation matrices and all uh, and more of that you can see it in the in my flight dynamics lectures and all. So, using those transformation matrix uh, we will be able to convert it to the the body frame and things like that ok. So, remember these are our uh, states, these are our measured outputs and these are our desired outputs which are which we, have, we want to feed it into the autopilot or control design loop actually. So, to go ahead uh, we want this dynamics. So, some basic concepts first, there is a missile here, there is a target here, uh, it is just a 2D picture sort of thing, there is a reference line and there is a something like LOS angle and these are typical missile guidance diagram sort of thing. So, the Z D M along this y direction if you see this ok, it is very simple, it, it talks about the initial separation delta y plus delta v y times t go, whatever delta v y is defined as something like v t minus v m. So, and that is what is assumed to be a uh, kind of uh, constant here ok. If you assume that then Z D M y is, is something like this actually. So, when you put it back here ok Z D M then the d by d t of Z D M then uh, it turns out to be something like this actually ok. Ok. Now, uh, ok. So, there are different levels of uh, kind of uh, computation that you can propose. For example, if you if somebody wants uh, I mean uh, to incorporate this uh, delta v y dot also, this will be plus uh, this uh, half times delta v y dot uh, times t go square and all that actually ok. So, that is uh, depending on the uh, on the formulation essentially ok. Essentially, it comes from our uh, high, I mean uh, little bit early physics that we are aware of that uh, distance is nothing but uh, I mean distance initial distance plus uh, v times t plus uh, half a t square sort of thing actually ok. So, if you if you see that then z m y is uh, delta y plus delta v y point times t go. Here we are assuming that delta v y is not really very constant, but it is quasi steady sort of thing. So, every time it is updated there is a there is a v y change ok delta v y dot is accounted here of course, it is a real ok. But as far as Z D M component uh, I mean computation is concerned that you are assuming that delta V y is is constant actually. So, it is a little bit discrepancy, but that is how it is subject to our prerogative of how we formulate the problem actually ok. And uh, I mean this simplicity is necessary to have the output formulation uh, in a good way, output equation actually we will we'll see that in a couple of slides later. 
Anyway, coming back to that, uh, this is what it is. The dy dt of that is the derivative of this delta y dot plus derivative of the whole thing, which it talks about delta v y dot plus t go plus delta v y times t go dot. Okay, uh, where delta v y dot is nothing but target deceleration in the y direction minus missile deceleration in the y direction. So this this can be comp computed that way. Now, what about time to go? T go is very crude way. It is represented as delta r by delta r dot. So T go is minus of that really. So, then uh, T go dot it is very easy to uh, see that it is just uh, uh, d, d by dt of T go. So, compute this way this times the delta r dot uh, times uh, derivative of that minus delta r times double derivative of that divided by delta r dot square sort of thing. Then these two will cancel out. So, this is essentially uh, negative of 1 minus this term actually. So, T go dot we derive this way and delta v y dot is derived that way and uh, and uh, zm y divide it of that is derived that way and this what you would see it here this y direction can be extended to x and z components also basically so taken together we can write it something like this okay so this uh, zm x direction sim very similar expression what you because you take this one here and put it back okay that's what uh, divide it of zm y so similar zm x is something like this zm y uh, zm dot y uh, ZDM, uh, ZDM Z dot. Okay, so this turns out to be like this. Very similar to what this kind of expressions actually. Okay, where delta V X dot, delta V Y dot uh, is is computed something like this. Okay, so these three comes from like that, and then T go dot we derive this way. So that comes like that. Whereas A T X dot, A T Y dot, and all that they are also coming from some sort of a dynamics actually. Okay, so A T X dot is uh, negative of A T X by tau. They are first order uh, stable dynamics that you are incorporating for the target acceleration component. Okay, in other words, it assumes the target can momentarily put some acceleration, but uh, eventually it it will stay. I mean, if it uh, stays there, then uh, uh, the uh, target acceleration is eventually going to go to zero actually. Because it cannot continuously keep on accelerating, the vehicle capability may not be there actually. Okay. All right. So this is uh, this is the formulation. This is the framework of steady equation. Now this delta, I mean this delta r and delta r dot and all can be computed that way also basically. Okay. Now what about output equation? That's uh, is more important. But also remember these are typically inertial components actually, inertial frame components. We, we don't have to forget that actually. Now, output equation ultimately remember that we want this uh, outputs are given in the form of range, range rate, gimbal angles and their rates. But uh, to know this we also have to, have to find out uh, this uh, uh, other variables what I mean actually, especially these quantities okay, lambda i dot, lambda i dot and all that. So, this is the lambda i, lambda i definition sort of thing and their rates will we will need in, in our formulation here. So, we need to find out uh, this LOS uh, angles essentially and their rates. Okay. So, the R, RL and RL dot LO, LOS separation and their rate, rate of change can be directly computed like that because that is uh, that is very easy actually. Okay. These two first two component RL is square root of this part and RL dot is derivative of that actually. So, put it back here. Now, coming to lambda A and lambda E, okay. lambda A is this uh, okay. Lambda is this this angle. Okay, so this angle can be directly represented as something like uh, ten inverse delta y by delta z from these two components. Actually, if you if you formulate this this one, then lambda is nothing but delta y. Okay, okay, you have to see that way somewhere like that. It's parallel to y axis actually. Anyway, so delta y divided by delta z. Okay, if you if you put a well, let me put that there, if you put it something like this parallel to the, okay, this turns out to be perpendicular like that actually. Anyway, so this this uh, ten, 10 lambda a is uh, delta y by delta x, so you can compute it that way. Okay. And then the lambda a dot is derivative of that. Similarly, lambda e you can take it in a different plane. This one, and this is a projection, and then in that projection, this, uh, this angle appears like that. So, 10 lambda e is delta x divided by square root of delta y square plus delta z square, and then lambda e dot you can you can take derivative of that and write it actually. Okay. 
So, these components are available especially these two will directly go to our formulation, but these these four components especially lambda i dot and lambda i dot we will need that in formulating this uh, I mean this uh, gimbal angle rates actually. So, here all right. So, we, so these are com computed that way. Remember all these delta x delta y happens in the in the inertial component and we need to find it out from the state vector actually. So, this is where this equation comes in handy here. So, if delta x is computed reversely as zm minus delta v times t go. Okay. So, this delta x delta y delta z can be first computed that way and then they are used here in that form and then you have this these two dots lambda i dot and lambda i dot which will be required in the next slide actually. Also remember this uh, this measurements are uh, typically available in secure gimbal frame and uh, LOS uh, uh, frame information is obtained through a series of transformation actually we will we'll see that actually. Okay. So, this is this is what range we have this and we assume here that the range is corrupted by some noise and then range rate uh, and then gimbal angles are also corrupted by some noise okay. and this gimbal angles are essentially these angles now. Now, we we'll assume that this initial body axis actually. So, with respect to the body axis what this LOS vector means? These are what we saw with respect to inertial axis. These LOS what it makes with respect to inertial axis. And here what you tell these LOS and the seeker is typically aligned towards the LOS all the time that is what is another implica implication of that. And then we tell okay, this axis what you are seeing here is nothing but uh, uh, this phi and gamma sort of thing. These are uh, I mean phi x phi y typically different people define that way. So, these these angle phi y 1 phi z ok, well let me put it that way. So, this uh, some small mistakes here probably this is uh, phi y is phi z actually like that. Anyway, so this uh, these, uh, these angles are represented something like this ok and then these angle angles are represented like that. Now, you can see that there is a transformation matrix involved this uh, CL to uh, this LOS to inertial and then inertial to body actually. So, what you what you are getting here this LOS vector in LOS frame really. So, you see LOS vector in LOS frame this is 100 that one is converted back to inertial frame using this this matrix and then inertial frame to body frame because these are typically available with us actually this this angle informations and all. So, then uh, this can be repre I mean expressed as a function of that. So, the, and then that can be substituted here basically. All right. So, this all these th things uh, happen uh, these are all little bit uh, complex looking algebra, but, but especially is attractable algebra it is not much of an issue. All right. So, our formulation finally talks range, range rate, gimbal angles and then their rates okay. these are corrupted by noise everywhere actually. Okay. So, now we have got this output formulation output equation formulation for the information that are available. Okay, so, essentially we have got what we wanted x dot equal to f of x u and y equal is a, is a function of uh, x actually. Okay, so, now we are ready to implement our common filter use it and then finally, get this information actually. Okay. Uh, all right, all right little detail about that uh, L m n uh, can be represented something like this where this inertial I mean uh, inertial to LOS and uh, inertial to body and body to gimbal these are all computed that way actually. Sometimes it these will need LOS angles with respect to inertial frame these are angles with respect to inertial uh, I mean these are uh, these angles lambda e and lambda a are uh, angles that the LOS frame makes with respect to inertial frame and these are the angles that the LOS makes with respect to body frame. And these are the uh, quaternion component, uh, components essentially contain angles that contain a relationship between uh, inertial frame to body frame actually. So, these things will be heavily used in this formulation sort of thing. Finally, what you are getting what you are what you are what you get is uh, going back all the way to the first slide this this one z d m by t go square. So, we have got some sort of estimated value of z d m and t go. So, we want to go back and see what we can do. Okay. Now, this one okay, the same thing, but remember the ZDM uh, XYZ components are computed now in the inertial frame. So, if you simply put this uh, this thing that happens to be in the inertial component. Now, what you really need is body component. So, finally, we again use this uh, this inertial to body uh, transformation to, to convert this uh, this components to the body components. 
And also remember uh, in the terminal phase typically there is no lateral acceleration along uh, x axis well it is not typically called lateral acceleration it is no acceleration along uh, okay, x axis. So, this, this word lateral is probably not required because y at z it is called lateral acceleration it is called axial acceleration here. Okay. But typically you can say that okay, acceleration along x axis cannot be realized. So, we ignore that. Okay. And we rather leave with the fact that okay, as, as long as t co estimation is good, it will, it will also take care of that. And then uh, the key point to note here is there is no lag between estimation and gradients. Okay, you do all this heavy algebra and then pass it through Kalman filter things like that. The, with the whole motivation that finally I don't have to realize in a loop synthesis sort of thing. I want to avoid that. So this is what it is uh, done here. We tell okay, body body components can be realized something like this actually. Okay. All right. So uh, then, this y a y c and a z c can be given to the uh, this autopilot uh, logic basically, and that is also done here actually. In other words, uh, somebody can stop here and then take okay only 3D point mass model and start simulating and things like that. That may be a first cost validation of the concept. But if you are really talking about uh, real validation of uh, I G and things like that. We have to pass it through the, the, the real uh, autopilot uh, synthesis loop as well and see what is the performance actually. So, this is what is done here, details I will not talk. I think uh, one of the previous lectures we have also talked a little bit about that. We have this uh, lateral oscillations coming and this uh, auxiliary roll angle sort of thing command is also coming. Okay. In other words, delta c dot is nothing but uh, I mean delta dot, I mean zeta dot is nothing but p. And uh, what you are looking for this equation sort of thing is uh, I mean uh, this essentially okay, you will not worry so much on that. What you are telling is this PC can be directly it may not be coming here also okay, for simplicity. This may not be felt, but here you can assume that PC is 0. Okay. So, you can uh, you can do that also basically. So, ultimately what you need is roll rate stabilization, roll rate should go to 0 angle of roll which uh, what particular angle it stabilizes it does not really matter that much actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, this is this can be done this way also then you convert it outer loop and then go to the inner loop control and then there is some sort of a fin deflection logic you put it back uh, and then delta 1 to that actuator thing you pass it through with uh, with uh, rate limits and, and position limits also. Then finally, whatever numbers you get it combine back and then kind of simulate back actually. So, these details are hidden here. Okay. So, just for simplicity we are given in this way sort of thing. All right. So, the output uh, command transfer is uh, when you do it here, it is done this uh, typically this way. This uh, a y c dot and a z c dot are computed like this in the first order error dynamic sort of thing. And then you assume that okay, a z c actually is a, is a function of uh, alpha only. So, a z okay, a z dot is okay, something like this, this comes from this one a z is assumed to be a function of alpha only. So, a z dot is typically a del a z by uh, del alpha okay, into alpha dot. Okay. So, when I compute my alpha dot, I'll, this is the, you can reverse compute it that way. So, this is nothing but uh, a z dot okay, multiplied uh, by uh, del alpha okay, 1 by essentially a z dot uh, into 1 by del a z by del alpha. Okay. So, this can be inverted back and all that actually assuming continuity. So, this is how it is computed. This is uh, what you see here uh, in the alpha c command actually. All right, so, this is how it is alpha c command you get it that way beta c also equivalently that way a y is a purely a function of beta you assume there and then get it that way. So, then you get this p c is 0 okay, that is what we put p c 0 q c and r c can be computed from alpha c dot and beta c dot that way. Okay. Details are the uh, will not talk too much here actually. Then once you have this uh, uh, this commanded body rates, then you can go back and put the, this kind of a dynamics now, and then realize the control surface deflection actually. Okay, and these components, as I told, are decomposed into fin deflection commands and then fed to the actuators. Okay, if it's a real missile flight, you stop there, you fed it to actuator, actuator responds, and then go ahead and uh, apply it actually. In a simulation, it is also passed through a second order dynamics to mimic the uh, actuator dynamics. 
and then it is also passed through right hand magnitude bounds and then combined back into the into this form again okay now that will be the realized deltas i mean these are these are commanded deltas once you take it through that that will be realized deltas and then those are the values that will be fed to the system dynamics for simulation actually okay so this is how the simulation is carried out now coming to some quick results sort of thing these are simulation results r r dot 5 5 is that thing like that some of these numbers are available in the in the paper also you can see some of that actually if you really want to have an idea of what kind of numbers have been used and all that okay. now results are typically done in uh, three cases one is uh, the target doing a step maneuver and a little bit surprised towards end also okay first uh, some sort of step and then after some time in a different step maneuver sort of thing and then we have a sinusoidal maneuver and then finally some sort of a ballistic target actually okay so this is uh, what the command is given to the target okay they assume that okay the final take go is 4 seconds the time to go is essentially 4 seconds available so within 2 to 4 this uh, these commands are given 3g sort of thing and if it is less than 2 okay less than 2 seconds towards the very end target does exactly the opposite actually okay it kind of tries to surprise the surprise the missile sort of thing okay. and these are very common maneuvers done by aircrafts also okay so if you do that then this is the interceptor and this is uh, this is the target trajectory and this is the intercept trajectory and it doesn't feel like uh, there is any anything that matters even if the target does uh, separate i mean surprise maneuvers actually as long as there is some tigo i mean obviously with the very very final moment if somebody does it uh, i mean very close to the t tigo zero somebody does a quick uh, surprise maneuver probably that may be difficult to do but you have something like 2 seconds to go it is uh, is not small i mean it's not big it's also uh, very small in some sense but still you have to go at 2 seconds to go basically so whether you, your estimation guidance control uh, responds to that or not i remember all uh, if you if you look at one of my previous lecture it also talks about these problems uh, i mean these formulations are very critical when uh, time to go is less actually so from here onwards when t go is less than 0 you can think of think of that as a new problem and in this new problem you know, the time to go is really 2 seconds i mean this is very very small so whether it can really do the job now the picture tells us that yes it can do the job actually okay. and then this are these are the pictures in in z and y and these are the pictures in z and x actually okay so these same thing are decomposed into two image planes sort of two image figures sort of thing and this is done that way okay. you can see that uh, both the towards the end here as well as here they are meeting very close actually okay. That is why the missed distance is very less. And also you have to see the as I told in Kalman filter uh, class there is a consistency issue and things like that. So, we have to put this uh, consistency check at least. So, this uh, sigma bound test sort of thing. So, we have this 1 sigma uh, taken from P matrix and those are the bounds plus or minus square root of 1 sigma and then ultimately the estimated value comes within that bound. Okay. So, that is the validation check. Okay, this these ZDMs are computed very good that sense, and then you can see this uh, this error delta x delta y delta z uh, they are also coming with the bound. Momentarily they are going out because that is the point where things are uh, I mean the target is doing a surprise maneuver actually. Okay, but again within very small time it comes back and then uh, your estimation is very good and followed by your response is also good, so you are able to capture the target actually. Okay, and this uh, this times are typically given in normalized time units and then. Uh, I mean, the, we do not want to reveal the exact time the simulation and things like that. So, it is a very typical, I mean, accepted practice world over actually. So, do not go by the numbers in the time here, they are not absolute quantities actually. All right, so this is this is the point here. Okay. Then, so all the other variables also you can see the target acceleration, the, here it does a surprise maneuver, but very quickly the error comes down. That means we are able to know what the target is doing very quickly actually. Okay. And you can also see this uh, measurement uh, error versus estimated error and things like that. Uh, so, that is another sort of uh, test actually. This is a kind of whiteness test and all that actually. So, residual thing or whatever uh, y minus uh, your C x hat if you remember that, uh, that has to be white actually. So, in, if you plot it, it should feel that okay, the blue line has to be some sort of a white noise, whereas the estimated one should be some sort of a smooth curve actually. Okay. So, that is what you see here and that validates one more thing actually okay 
Now, these are the lateral accelerations in three components and they are the fin deflections delta q delta r they are all within bounds actually the, the bounds are uh, plus or minus 30 degrees typically. So, they are all within the bound is able to capture the target in a good sense. Now, finally, there is uh, something like a Monte Carlo simulation that means you randomize simulation you take random initial conditions of the uh, missile random target uh, initial conditions uh, things like that and then uh, you do repeated simulations and then finally, come up with some mean and standard deviation. So, this is done for 100 runs like that ok. Then the mean and standard deviation out of these 100 test case simulations happens to be something like this mean is 0.8 ok and then this uh, standard deviation is uh, 0.12. So, even if you take uh, mu plus 3 sigma is some sort of error finally. So, this happens to be 3 sigma is 0 0.36. So, 0 0.36 plus 0 0.8 uh, is something like point, uh, uh, well 0 0.8 plus 0 0.36 uh, point two, uh, I mean 1.1 1 .1 sort of thing, 1.16 sort of thing. So, 1.1, 1.2 meters level of accuracy you are getting that means almost uh, I mean if it is a classical uh, aircraft target it is actually a, a hit to kill actually you will be able to hit the target. All right. So, this is what it is ok then this uh, uh, we have also done something like a random perturbation of this uh, this aerodynamic parameters actually ok. So, aerodynamic parameters are taken as something like plus minus 10 percent and, and things like that and evaluated at some sort of kernel points values actually. You take all these uh, plus 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 perturbations all these uh, kind of minus 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 perturbations some plus some minus like that actually ok. So, then uh, then you repeat repeatedly simulate again and then take the standard and mean and standard deviation these 100 test cases are done for each of the cases like this ok and then uh, then do some sort of mean and standard deviation sort of thing and uh, it turns out that the numbers are the are uh, even if you take the worst case scenario probably that one turns out to be. So, um, 3 I mean 3 um, into 0. 0.6 is uh, 1.8 plus 1.2. So, some 1.3 so 3.1 so, so about uh, 3 meters uh, um, missed distance is the worst case scenario actually. So, the, the, the essentially the message is it, it works uh, very well ok and it works even if the time to go is very small that is another point actually. Okay. Then the last case is ok the next case is uh, sinusoidal maneuver if you does something like this what happens the target comes like that but you are able to predict what the target is doing through the estimation process and hence we are having a good engagement. Now, here, here you can see this this plane it is good, but that plane is not very good ok because missile is here and I mean target is here missile is here. So, is some degree of uh, error basically, but uh, but also remember this is actually flat error that means this separation is not very good not very high. So, that is why the accuracy is not very good actually ok. Again similar behavior ok you can see all this is going coming down. What you need really remember is ultimately Z m by T go square. So, as long as Z m estimation is very good and T go estimation is also very good ok then things will be falling in place actually ok. And obviously, this uh, velocity level because the target is continuously doing some sinusoidal maneuver sort of thing going this way that way all that. This is not exactly bounded between uh, 1 sigma values, but if you really put 2 sigma 3 sigma bounds then it will come back in within that actually. So, these are ATX, uh, ATY the target resolution components in XYZ uh, then your T go and remember T go 1 sigma bound is so good I mean so high whereas the estimation value is so good ok. The estimated T go information what you are getting and what the actual T go is is very close to 0. So, here we have this uh, ZM components are estimated very good and T go is also estimated extremely good that is the reason why everything works very nicely actually ok. Again similar set of behavior and uh, ok I do not want to keep on ok. This is the commanded value and achieved value were, were very good that also tells us that the autopilot synthesis is very good ok. Again the mean and standard deviation sense it is very very small again we have this 0.32 times point uh, this one is 0 0.07 in this case 7 centimeter other. So, and then uh, the level I mean the confidence is, is very, you know, very good actually. Again similar exercise and then similar results also what you get 1.3 and 0.6 here. Okay. Uh, what about a ballistic target where the target comes in a straight line, but there is some some deceleration due to drag and all that, it, but it cannot maneuver. 
Okay, so in that situation, this is uh, this is coming that way, and this uh, missile is going and engaging there. Okay, this 2D plane again similar sort of behavior. TGO estimation is also good here, and JDM is also good here, and then uh, uh, all other things are very similar. So you can also see the the body rates commanded and achieved are also nice. Only towards the end there is some problem, but that is uh, that is expected actually. Okay. But lateral acceleration is expected to change drastically towards end actually because essentially the guidance uh, operates on the PN philosophy. Okay, so the one of the drawbacks of PN guidance is towards the end the, the, there will be lateral singularity and all that actually. So that will be here uh, as well. Okay. So again, the mean and tunnel deviation turns out to be very small. Uh, this is 0.4 times 3 sigma even if you take it's 0.75, 0.75 plus 0.4 is something like 1.2 around that figure. So, essentially it is also good uh, again perturbation studies and then your results are also good. Okay. There is nothing to be alarmed and the worst case scenario turns out to be about 2 3 meters I mean that is the message actually. So, the a small conclusion about this particular work uh, is something like uh, it is a new method, new technique uh, of integrated estimation and guidance. Okay. And the design uh, essentially is not very difficult. The only difficulty I see is how do you put the output equation. Once you know understand how do you put the output equation in the form of static, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, in the form that is required, that uh, y equal h of x, then everything will fall into place actually. All other things are rather straightforward sort of thing. Various target cases you demonstrated, and then it also tells that uh, the which distance turn satisfies this uh, hit to kill requirement actually. Okay. So, this is that part, this part of the work. Now, the second part we talk about uh, integrated estimation guidance and control. So, the, the all the three things are taken together and this is the subsequent follow up work of this one uh, in presented in 2011 GNC rather. And also just a comment this both the papers uh, we are trying to kind of put it into a journal paper and then try to see whether it can be published in some type of uh, journal paper in the in a little more polished results and then uh, some some cons, uh, small concerns address a little more rigorously like that actually. Let us see whether that is there or not I can't say, but the, these two references are already available you can read it actually. So, the features of the proposed integrated estimation guidance control is just as I told before in estimation guidance and outer loop of the control is uh, is kind of used they are together. So, in some sense you can also in interpret this as something like partially integrated estimator guidance and control. Remember the last lecture I talked about partial IGC. So, this is something like uh, partial IGC basically. So, that is what we are talking here. And then uh, something like what we are in interested is uh, the necessary body rate commands are uh, evaluated directly. There is no lateral acceleration command. We want to uh, kind of estimate or kind of know the desired but body rate commands directly. So, the states are uh, very similar to what you have done before ZDM, relative velocity, target acceleration and time to go. Now, the filtering part uh, of, the, of the problem or estimation part of the problem remains very same as what is done before. Only the, the instead of going through a lateral acceleration generation and then realizing it through a body rate through a loop sort of thing, we want to see whether you can uh, do a little alternate way and then kind of uh, from ZDM itself can you put it uh, some sort of a direct body rate command generation actually. Yeah. All right, so, it is actually borrows this idea of time scale separation between GNC, GNC loops. Uh, so, similarly this also is uh, retained here because the inner loop is not fused, okay. inner loop is still separate actually. Okay. All right, so, this is uh, what you are talking here, there is outer loop, there is inner loop. Okay. And what you are talking here is this part of the design is is together. Okay. All right. So this looks like this: estimator, guidance, and outer loop to all together. Then we pass to the inner loop, and then feed it to the plant actually. All right. So it's very similar. So I don't want to repeat all the things. Uh, these are all uh, state equation. These are same states. Uh, so and estimation part of the formulation remains exactly identical. So I don't have to. This is the philosophy, it uh, borrows the idea of uh, a little simplification of notation instead of ZDM we have written as Z. Okay. So, that represents Z represents ZDM and all that, but other things are very similar to what you have done before 
these are the, this is the ZDM in y direction, the rate and then relative velocity dot and all t go dot and all that actually. And this is all happens, I mean we have explained uh, just a couple of minutes back that this tide equation can be realized this way. Okay. Now, output equation, uh, I mean uh, this, okay, the small diff, okay, instead of ZDM, okay, we have just uh, rewritten in terms of Z actually, that is the only difference here between these two slides actually. Okay. All right. So, the after that uh, the, the output equation exactly remains identical as before. So, these, these things also I do not have to kind of explain too much. This is uh, range and range rate and then this LOS angles and the rates, especially the rates will be used in, the, in this formulation here. So, the finally you have this range uh, and then the range rate and the gimbal angles and then the rates actually. Okay. Then here is a new concept. After getting the ZDM, okay, we do not want to generate this PN sort of guidance, the ZDM by T go square and all that actually. What we, uh, well, there is one more small comment before I uh, go, okay, no, no, it is all right. We need the state, I mean, this estimation for part of the formulation remains identical. Then what you need is instead of going through this lateral acceleration generation and all that, we want to enforce this sort of error dynamics and this part is derived uh, kind of motivated from uh, from dynamic inversion or, or feedback generation philosophy actually. So, we want to put finally remember what is the guidance problem, guidance problem essentially talks about ZDM going to 0 as T goes to or T go goes to 0 basically really. Okay. So, this equation if you if you put it that I mean if you put it that way when T go goes to 0 T goes in I mean T goes to T f. And if you assume T f is infinity, I mean and that the infinity is subjected to the selection of gains and all that. If your gains are very high, uh, even 4 seconds can be infinity really. So, if you assume that your T f is, uh, is high, uh, so that so my gains are very high, so that whatever T f is there that can be interpreted as infinity. Then this equation can, can be put it, I mean we can, can be put, so that when T goes to infinity, that means T go goes to 0, okay. T goes to infinity means T goes in T f that means T go goes to 0. So, when that T go goes to 0, then Z and Z dot also will go to 0, remember that. And not just Z, Z will go to 0, that is our objective, but in this uh, this one Z will go to 0 and Z dot will also go to 0 basically. So, that is another degree of good thing because any any inaccuracy of uh, T go estimation, suppose there is a small error there, then because Z dot is also 0, it will not blow up suddenly. It is, okay. So, Z will remain to be 0 for a little time at least actually. So, that, that means a small amount of uh, uncertainty in TGO estimation will also be tolerated here. Okay. All right. So, coming back to this, uh, this is uh, how it is. Uh, this uh, this equation is what we want to enforce where omega and zeta are design parameters. So essentially, this is one gain and this is two gain, I mean another gain. Position gain and rate gain sort of thing can imagine that way. Then Z double dot can be, I mean you have got this uh, this Z dot equation. So, from here you put one more derivative to Z double dot and, and estimate all that actually. Okay. All right. So, Z double dot is delta V dot plus all this uh, can be taken, but here it will come across this T go double dot also and that is what you are assuming to be 0. It need not be 0, but you are assuming to be 0 and uh, that assumes that okay, T, T go really does not change that drastically, it can change the change is also captured in T go dot, but T go double dot level you do not have to capture, it is it's assumed to be 0. Then the, with the simplification and assuming, I mean knowing that delta V dot is nothing but this, we can actually put it Z double dot is something coming from he, coming sorry this one, this one is nothing but that and coming like this and then these two terms are combined to write it that way actually. Okay. Now, remember it is not at minus m, it is at dot minus m dot actually. Okay. So, from this equation we can write that at m dot is something like this okay. and then m dot is, uh, is something like letter resolution rate sort of thing and this has three components again and these three components what you see here are uh, can be, so remember this is what was used in the in the inner loop of the autopilot synthesis. ATM dot, I mean this is this is what we, we purposefully generated assuming AZ is a function of purely alpha and AY is a function of purely beta. Now, it is actually directly available from this expression sort of thing. So, you can use it and then alpha C and beta C are all the generated that way and then you, you have this uh, generated body rates that QC and RC actually. 
and again similar things are there the little bit slightly different pictures which uh, takes a little bit more details about autopilot design sort of thing it is it is incorporated here. So, more in detail more details can be found in the paper let me not uh, I mean explain too much here. Alright, so summary of this uh, this uh, IEG I mean integrated guidance control and estimation what you are talking or IEGC also I mean some people call it different ways uh, whatever it is the summary of philosophy is like this out uh, guidance and outer loop control uh, is integrated as well as estimation as also basically ok that is the bottom line actually ok. So, results uh, something like this uh, again the results are generated using six top platform and uh, we have a second order actuator dynamics here. And for sensing the body rates and acceleration, a second order gyro and acceleration model is also used. And then the realistic sequel model has been used for generating sequel measurements as well. Okay. So, all these things are part of the six top formulation actually, six top simulation platform. And again, the same cases a craft maneuvering step maneuver and then with sinusoidal maneuver, then finally, ballistic target. So, how does it think P, this P naught Q R can be slightly different than what we what we have uh, as much as possible mostly similar values and then this, these are the results actually ok. You have the similar case of uh, target comes with one acceleration and some sort of uh, towards the end it changes its acceleration and all that actually ok. And here it is uh, ok you can see there are two two times it changes actually ok. One time it changes here ok initially then after some time it changes some value then uh, towards the very end it also changes some other value actually ok. So, that uh, all that thing are happening here, but still we are able to capture that actually ok. Okay. Right. So, uh, anyway so this is how it is uh, so the uh, ok. Alright, so this is how it is. Uh, uh, the, the results are like this: uh, your ZDM XYZ components uh, are estimated again very well, and this this one is momentarily out because there is a target acceleration uh, here as well as something like here. Okay, so we have this uh, these things uh, given there. Uh, anyway, these values what you see are normalized times again. So the actual time can be of order of 3 4 seconds but what you see here is is normalized values and all that actually okay. anyway that doesn't matter but what it, what it matters is towards there are double surprises towards the end but still you are able to get it very very good okay and you can see how this body rates are followed so that means uh, this autopilot design is also good there is a small amount of delay here okay but that delay doesn't uh, matter too much uh, in in estimation uh, in uh, final missed distance actually then finally, there is a sinusoidal maneuver. I mean, the next there is a sinusoidal maneuver, so similar maneuver sort of thing. Again, the results are good. ZDM estimation is extremely good here, almost zero uh, in this component. These components, at least, only z direction there is some value, uh, which is which results in some mistakes actually. All right. So, uh, but remember, this x y z is not uh, the body x y z. These are all inner cell x y z. You then you convert it back to body components, and then. Uh, that happens automatically in this formulation on that actually ok. So, this is what it is and then the results are something like this you can see this uh, the finally, the experiment with respect to a ballistic target uh, ballistic target comes like that uh, as I told before it cannot maneuver, but there is a big amount of deceleration. So, as far as target I mean the problem of missile guidance is considered it appears like a maneuver ok target when target deceleration happens in excel direction also in 3D sense it is actually nothing but a maneuver ok it has it it uh, sees deceleration in the excel axis anyway basically okay. So, even then it is able to capture that in a good sense ok this also you can see there is no difference visually you cannot see any difference between both the I mean both the 2D plots actually ok. So, these are the results and then finally, going to the Monte Carlo simulation sort of thing again you can see that mean and standard deviation values are 1.1, 0.5 and then 1.4 like that actually here. So, if you take 1.1, 0.5 as the worst case scenario and 0.5 is uh, 1 sigma, 3 sigma is 1.5, 1.5 plus 1.1 is 2.6 sort of thing. So, that happens to be the worst case missed distance actually within the scenario considered in all these simulations actually. 
and this is the histogram sort of uh, sort of picture that we typically give uh, from larger simulation studies and all. So, if you get 100 multi color runs, this is what you will get in conventional design. Okay. That means, you are guaranteed to capture everything okay, within 2 meters mesh distance let us say, but here the mesh distance will reduce it to 1.1 sort of thing. Here. Okay. So, this picture tells us comparatively how, how, how much benefit you will get by incorporating this, this integrated design approaches actually. Okay. So, summary sense this is uh, uh, what you see here. Okay, and this is the conventional approach where you have outer loop, inner loop, all sort of things. The guidance is computed that way, uh, and this is not fused. I mean, if you fuse it, then this is IEG. This will happen here. It's not fused actually. So this is conventional way of doing things. This is uh, integrated estimation guidance design way of doing things actually. So conclusions uh, essentially, uh, it's also a new idea, new integrated estimation guidance and control algorithm. Okay, that is what we have proposed, but also you can see other literatures, uh, various literature has appeared uh, from, from various uh, people. You can see that different ideas are popping up uh, for this uh, design approach. And essentially, the second order radium dynamics is the key here. Okay, this, if you go back uh, the formulation part of it, what was the difference? The main difference, in my view, is, is this one. Once you have this and then, then compute that way, then rest of the things you compute directly using these components actually. Okay. These components you then take body components and all that actually. Okay. All right. So, that is the key difference actually. Okay. All right. So, then this new IAGC formulation has its own uh, like a substantial improvement in various interception scenario. And also remember somebody can tell what is big deal from 2 meters to kind of 1.1, 0.9 meters. Well, that is the that is the real uh, story. I mean, the going close to that. Suppose somebody wants, let's say, 20 meter mesh distance, and that's that's a very doable problem in any case. That is standard. It is taken uh, taken for granted that it can be done. But when you go closer and closer, you want real hit to kill sort of behavior, and you want to be within this uh, kind of one meter level accuracy, two meter level accuracy, like that. The problem gets tougher and tougher. And even here, what you see in the blue line in the conventional way, but conventional way also contains nonlinear autopilot actually. Remember that. If you, if you put the classical autopilot, it may still happen to be about 5 6 meter mesh distance. And it also talks about innovation way, innovative way of filtering. I mean, this is just, uh, I mean, if you do not have that, again go for uh, classical filtering sort of thing, the mesh distance can be of the order of 10 meters. So, all these benefits, you can put a good filter, a good tuning, and then put a nonlinear autopilot uh, there. Uh, and then that is reduced to 2 meter. Now, you bring into the IEGC concepts and all, then you can reduce it to 1 meter. Okay. So, things like that uh, you should not uh, forget actually. As you go closer and closer, the ball game is much, much, much more difficult actually. So, so, so this this is what you are getting uh, advantage by in, by invoking this uh, this integrated design approach actually. And especially these are important when your T goes is very small. Okay. Target does surprise maneuvers at the end which are uh, also true for ballistic missile interception in a way, because uh, towards the very end the when the missile is uh, in the atmosphere, we are talking about endo atmosphere interception, then uh, the target may not be doing intentional maneuver, but it can just happen because of the physics that the target can go through spiral maneuver, which is also a surprise at the end actually. So, these considerations can uh, motivate us to do more and more and then uh, extract every piece of uh, thing that you can be extracted from the problem really. Actually. Okay, so, modern uh, control theory, modern optimal control, nonlinear control, everything comes into picture, estimation theory, everything comes into picture to realize this, this dream of going and hitting the target actually in a way. Okay. So, in a broad sense, uh, the broad conclusions are something like this, integrated designs are typically more natural to the flight vehicles, because flight vehicle does not understand what is point mass, what is six drop and all that. The physics happens in the integrated, I mean in the detail level only. So, the integrated designs are typically more natural because six drop dynamics is, is directly used. And they typically derive a lot of uh, synergy between various subsystems and the necessity of having a compatible point mass equation is also avoided. Integrated designs lead to better performance in general that we have seen it also. And integrated designs can be proposed in following various philosophies that is the integrated guidance and control, integrated estimation guidance as well as integrated estimation guidance and integrated estimation guidance and control altogether sort of thing. 
So, this is the, this is what it is uh, more on that you can see again in these two papers and then various other papers that other people have also proposed actually. So, with that comment I will stop here thank you.